All right, back on the Young Turks. Um, now we have another uh, guest for you guys, very interesting. Actually, John Amato, who just left, also used to be uh, in music. He was a drummer, I think, for Duran Duran, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so, uh, but we're going to stay on the topic of music. There's a documentary coming out on PBS. It's called Rock Prophecies. And it's uh, also going to be available on DVD on, starting on September 14th, but it's airing throughout the fall. Uh, and it's about uh, rock star photographer Robert Knight, who actually joins us now. Robert, welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, great to have you here. You have a very interesting story. You've uh, taken pictures of people like Rolling Stones, Jimi Hendrix, Led Zeppelin, Elton John, B.B. King, Eric Clapton, Aerosmith. But the twist is you took all, uh, a lot of those pictures before they even got famous. So yeah, the that's question true. I actually was chasing after Led Zeppelin before anybody were, even knew who they were. They were called the New Yardbirds. Jeff Beckett told me about a band that Jimmy was doing, and I convinced Jan Weiner at Rolling Stone to send me down to L.A. as a freelance photographer, and I actually showed up, and I was way underage to get in the venue where they were playing. And it was almost like the almost famous story, except six years before it happened to Cameron Crowe. Uh, the box office called the hotel and said, there's a young guy here wanting to shoot the band. Jimmy Page said, send him to the hotel. I hung out all day with Led Zeppelin. They brought me in as road crew. I wasn't allowed to step on the floor, but I was on the stage with Led Zeppelin on their very first show in America. So, so, all right, so that's Led Zeppelin, so that's an interesting story. But how do you find out find what these groups are? I mean, which ones are emerging? Which ones are going to be huge? Or did you just take pictures of, of everyone that was coming up and then some of them wound up being famous? No, no, I was very, very selective because... I had found some. I grew up in Hawaii. I was the son of a Baptist minister and not even allowed to listen to rock and roll music as a kid. And one day in Waikiki, I found these publications that some Brits had left. And in there were all these pictures of these bands I'd never heard of and photos of them that were unbelievable. So I sent away for a catalog and actually had, in some cases, these records before they ever came out in America. And I would champion him to the local DJs on the radio stations in Hawaii. I was going on about the kinks and the who and the pretty things. and. But I was a very guitar-centric guy. I wasn't buying in at all to the San Francisco scene like the Dead or Jefferson Airplane. So I avoided taking their pictures, even though I was there with them. That's interesting. And so l let me talk to you a little bit about those bands. So there's all these legendary stories, you know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll, et cetera. Yeah. How much of that is true? Well, I mean, in some cases, I'd say it was under-reported and really? others exaggerated. But... Um, you know, I actually, for a young guy, got to see a lot of eye-opening things, but it was probably considered pretty normal in the 60s as an experimental period, you know? So you just, like, you were seeing everything for the first time, people with long hair and crazy clothes and people smoking drugs, and, I mean, it was all in a state of turmoil, so you almost didn't doubt anything that was happening because it was all sort of a prototype, I think. So what happened to rock and roll? I mean, because right now, do we still have the same sex, drugs, and rock and roll, or no? No, it's very corporate now, because, you know, back in the day, it was very loose. There wasn't backstage passes, three-song limits. I mean, none of that existed. People were really happy to see a photographer, because in those days, you actually had to be a highly trained photographer that knew about film and processing, and you didn't have all the sort of gadgets that we have today. Today, anybody with a digital camera can say they're a photographer and march down to the front of a stage. But back then, it was a very small number of people, and there's probably a dozen of us that are still out there carrying on that were back there in the pit in 68, 69, and 70, you know. And, um, and uh, it's just changed, though. The whole, you know, consolidation in radio, consolidation in the music industry, uh, companies that knew nothing about music buying record companies, I think it all had something to do with why music it is the way it is today. So you think the music industry is not nearly as authentic as it was back then? Well, the, quote, major record companies I don't think are as original. However, with social networking and the Internet and things like Cirrus Radio, people in diverse parts of the world are exposed to indie music. I mean, I listen to Cirrus all the time in my car, and I'm hearing bands before you ever hear them on consolidated radio stations. So it is possible today for a young band to be heard, discovered, uh, socially promote himself on the Internet, actually do phenomenal record sales and not even have a deal. So, you know, perhaps this is the worst example, but also in some ways it's also the best example. Look at what happened to Justin Bieber off of YouTube. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know I'm not sure he's the paragon of rock, but at the same time, 
here he was, he was just a kid, and he got discovered, yeah. and, you know, yeah. and it goes to show you the power of the, of the new media. Yeah, no, right? I was actually hanging out with Usher the other day, and we were talking about it, because he had a hand in that. And, but, you know, ever since I was a kid, there was always somebody that filled, filled that Justin Bieber thing that lasted three, four years, and it was phenomenal, made a lot of money, and then usually ended in a horrible story, which, you know, I hope doesn't happen to this kid. But, you know, if you look back over the 40-something years I've been working, there's nothing but, you know, the Leif Garrett story would be a good example. There was always somebody that made a lot of money, that, that created chaos, that later, you know, had a terrible crash and burn. We're talking to Robert Knight. Uh, he is the subject of The Rock Prophecies, which is a documentary about his work as a photographer in the rock industry. It's on PBS throughout the fall, and a DVD is coming out on September 14th. So, Robert, give me, is there one guy that you, stands out in all these different rock legends that you've hung out with as the most interesting rocker? I'd say Jeff Beck, because Jeff Beck has been true to himself from day one. He was an innovator on the guitar. You know, he had to fill Eric Clapton's footstep in the Yardbirds. And yet, over 42 years of working with him, he's done nothing but push the envelope as a guitar player. And sometimes it takes a decade before anybody understands any of his records. And I'd say of all the people that I've ever photographed over 42 years, he certainly would be one of the most innovative and interesting to work with. And he doesn't like to be photographed. So, <laughs> always a challenging thing. But the film... When, when John Chester made the movie, I really, John said that if uh, Robert had his way, that the whole movie would be on Jeff Beck, but nobody had ever done anything on Jeff. You can't find any documentaries on him. And when he did his own last year, Live at Ronnie Scott, he didn't put anything in there about him personally. So I think my film is probably one of the first behind the scenes where you see Jeff Beck at home playing guitar, talking about the guitar, where, he, where his, you know, everything came from. And, you know, I pretty much had the same thing with Santana and quite a few other people. So I kind of went back to my roots and put those guys in the movie and then introduced a bunch of new talent. So, so is, Robert, do you think their guitar has lost uh, some appeal over the years? And if, it's, Yeah, uh, it certainly has. I mean, And why, during, why do you think that happened? Well, because we went through a synthesizer period in the 80s where electronic music became new and innovative because we were just finding out about electronics. So the guitar player was reduced to a sample. And, and, you know, there were entire bands that had careers that really didn't have guitar players in them or had little, little interest. But I'd say that, you know, Eddie Van Halen, Slash, and Steve I in the early 80s and the late 90s, you know, you know, probably early 90s, late 80s, kind of brought the guitar back. And Slash has definitely pushed it back into a favorable thing and probably the most recognized guitar player on earth not because of his guitar playing necessarily, but because he's the centerpiece of a game that, you know, 10 to 15-year-olds play, and they know who he is. Yeah, well, and, and nothing helps your cause more than Guitar Hero. You know? That's right. Which and is... actually, that music has brought back the classic rock of my generation. There's a whole generation of kids now that are entering their teens that know who ACDC are, that know who Kiss are, Aerosmith, and then um, and, and that's bringing back the guitar. Robert, we've got about a minute left. Who's coming up now? Because obviously you saw all these groups, and you recognize their talent before almost anyone else did. Yeah. Who's coming up now that you think uh, is, is a great rock band? Well, they're kind of emerging, and they're not necessarily guitar-centric, but obviously Temper Trap is really pushing through. The Sick Puppies, who are 30 minutes of my film, are you know well-breaking through. Um, Silver Spun Pickups. And then there's individual artists that I'm working with right now that are just amazing that will be part of bands in the future, like, you know, Graham Whitford, Tyler Bryant, Josh Gooch, I mean, Yayo Sanchez out of Austin, Texas. You'll be hearing these names probably in the same way you used to hear Jeff Beck, Jimmy Page, and Eric Clapton in another couple of years. All right, Robert Knight. Uh, the uh, documentary is called Rock Prophecies. Check it out on PBS and out on DVD soon. Thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank it. you, sir. Bye. All right.